Okay. Or, or two minutes. Fine. <laughs> we'll be right back. You are listening to WBHM, digital broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. And yes, we are back. I know that was a little short, but we have things to say here, Jane. We do indeed. We do indeed. You're telling us about your geeky roommate, Computer Guy. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember in what context that was. I know we were talking about the moon and the Mars and the Chinese. Go ahead. You were talking about UFO information that he was getting interested in. Right. And and there's just been so much. It's a bit mind-blowing. The number of sightings are on the rise. People are getting collaborative sightings. And to the what I think of as the uninitiate people who just don't pay attention to UFOs. Like, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to scrapbooking. I'll just be honest. I know I know there's shock rippling through all of our <laughs> listening audience. I, and I admit it, I know. And admitting is the first step to recovery, right? But there you go. There are things we just don't turn our attention to. But once you start to look at UFO reporting, sighting reporting, the sheer numbers are staggering. Now, mm-hmm. we know, just like with crop circles, some of them are genuine and some of them aren't. Some people want to create a buzz, either because they're publicity hounds or professional debunkers. I'm becoming convinced that a lot of that trillions of dollars of CIA, well, of federal money gone missing, is going to pay, is going toward paying debunkers. And I challenge people on social media who take a very naysaying attitude about anything paranormal are you being paid to say that because the intolerance and close-mindedness don't seem real the way some politicians today don't seem real and that's all i'm going to say i know we're not going to talk about politics thank goodness but there's a lot going on in a lot of scientific debate that doesn't seem real similar to ufo reporting and i'm thinking about all kinds of strange science going on and again i don't some of it is getting political like climate change and i don't want to polarize anybody here about any of that stuff ufos it is really starting to look like the public is being softened up for what i call soft disclosure that Did we lose you, And Star Wars oh, and are. Close Encounter. Mm-hmm. Hello? Yes, you're there. Okay, everything all good? It okay. is. I just lost you for uh, a moment. Yeah, well, we were softened up in the 1960s with Star Trek and the 1970s with Star Wars and the 1980s and 90s and 2000s with more and more movies, Close Encounter and et cetera about UFOs, Mars attacks, the tone also swiveled away from phone home to we come in peace, blam, 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 you know, aka, aka, aka. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is true and which is false, it's all science fiction, right? Until you, see these things, until you see these things hovering out your window, which is what Stan Romanek in Colorado is talking about and other people are talking about. It's all an interesting story until it shows up outside your house 
And people who see these things outside their houses and outside their windows report that these things are following them and not just them, their families, and maybe have done for generations. This There is this consciousness component, wrapping it right back around to where we were before. Consciousness component. And when you haven't looked at it before, it seems it seems improbable. But when you start to look at it like many researchers have done, it's becoming – almost inevitable. Uh, in, you can't escape the conclusion that much as we like to be entertained and distracted by UFO reports and stories, almost like campfire stories of craft hovering in the air, there have been so many of these stories, so many credible reports. We, let's move beyond that. There's a cry now in ufology. Let's get beyond that and get into why, the why of it. Why are these craft appearing among us? Why do crop circles appear among us? Why is this stuff, Why do ghosts appear among us? What the heck is going on out there, Kat? Well, I think that there's information that we aren't paying attention to. And something has to happen to gain our attention. So... Visibility. I think they're trying to do it, you know, through our consciousness. And people are so walking in front of cars and buses because they're looking at their phone. Mm. Oh, I saw those videos. Yes. I mean, there's so much happening that is a distraction. And I believe it is a well planned distraction. So I think the only way to get their message across. Rather like some people take to Twitter, they take to the skies and they take to beam me up, Scotty, I need to talk to you, you know, kind of things. And I just think that it's the only method to communicate with our society as a whole without having to actually land on the White House for lawn, right? I'm beginning to think even if they did that, somehow the media would ignore it or spin CGI. it somehow. Be CGI. You know, <laughs> I don't. Just like all the evidence I that I have know. from my paranormal investigations. Oh, that's just CGI. Well, really, because I am the least technical wizard who could even create any CGI. <laughs> so, well, consider yeah. if if you were these advanced intelligences, I'm allow. I'm making some pretty strong hypotheses here but you know ifs a lot of ifs here if you were one of these advanced intelligences operating a craft over washington dc in july of 1952 as i cover in one of the chapters of my book Mm -hmm. unknown objects the top 10 u.s ufo cases by me gene broida we have in washington dc 1952 july two well, it was basically a month's worth of UFO sightings with two peaks of activity on two different weekends separated by two weeks. There were headlines. The military was recording both radar and visual sightings, and most people today never heard of this. Now, if you, right? because, because the United States government suppressed that information. That's, the, that's plain and simple. I don't have to defend that. That is what happened. Okay? That's what happened. That's why nobody today knows about it. It's not common knowledge like Columbus in 1492 kind of stuff. All right? It's that important. White, uh, UFOs buzzed the White House July 1952. Why doesn't everybody know this? Because of government propaganda. Anti, anti-knowledge. Yes. But, you know, it's so close to Roswell. You don't anticipate that that would have been something hidden. Roswell was known about. If you were one of these aliens in 1952 going, you know, we were about as clear as we could be without right. subjecting ourselves to bodily peril by landing on the White House lawn. In other words, if we landed on the White House lawn, there would be troops out there shooting us down. Absolutely. A la Mars Attacks, the movie. Okay. But it would be us firing on them, not the other way around. From that, what was, what was that? 1950s classic uh the day the or earth the stood still the day and, the earth stood still yes, that's those. where the craft landed and the robot got out the tin robot got out preaching peace and bad things happened to the alien robot 
need right. I say, right? So man is the enemy. Man is the enemy of man. Man is the enemy of other species. Uh, I hate to break it to people, but that's my take on it. So well, if we you always see these intelligence when we go to other around, countries. If you were one of these intelligences flying around in 1952 and you saw what happened in 1952, why on earth would you want to land your craft today? We haven't advanced in terms of consciousness very much. And that's well, deplorable. After 70 well, years, yes. I think that's deplorable. Thank you. It absolutely <laughs> is. But you know what? We are just about to come up on our news break. And I want people to find you. And cool. we're going to have to do this again in the very near future so that we can have the full two hours. Because I love our full two hours. And this is too short. But tell people again or I can about your website and how to get you by email and the book you can buy on Amazon people, or you can yes. contact Jean and get it. All of the so, above. Please email me Jean J E A N at light work one, one, one dot com or visit and, and visit my website, <laughs> www.light work one 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 dot com it's the same domain please go over to amazon search for my name gene broida b-r-o-i-d-a or the name of my book unknown objects more than one objects the top 10 u.s ufo cases check me out check the book out love kind reviews not that fond of nasty reviews but hey you know <laughs> who the is shoe fits. right if the shoe fits <laughs> I can take it. No, I love all you people listening and let us keep the light on Absolutely. with someone home with someone home. Yes. And that being said, we'll be back. This is our five minute news break. Thanks to NPR for that. And we'll be right back with Lee Harris. Thank you, Kat. Live Thank from you. NPR News in Washington, I'm Barbara Klein. Voters in Slovakia have elected a relative newcomer as president. Susanna Chaputova is set to be the country's first female president. The liberal environmental activist is calling for unity and a different style of politics. Tishima nielen vítězstvo, ale predovšetkým, že sa udialo spôsobom... I am happy not just for the result, but mainly that it is possible not to succumb to populism, to tell the truth and raise interests without aggressive vocabulary. This started in the local election, was confirmed in the presidential election, and I believe the European election will confirm it as well. Chaputova heard through a BBC interpreter. In neighboring Ukraine, voters are casting ballots in a presidential election, and polls show a comedian and TV sitcom star with no experience leads the field. Turkey's holding local elections today. Dori Buskaran reports two poll workers for the Islamist opposition party, Sadet, were killed. Two ballot box observers working at a polling station in a primary school are dead after a dispute in the city of Malatya. Sadet party chairman Tamel Karmolu confirmed the deaths on Twitter and is accusing the nephew of an AKP candidate. The AKP is Turkey's dominant political party. Elections today will determine mayors, district governors, and other local officials. But Turkey's economic woes following last summer's presidential election have sharpened the country's political divide. Now it seems the race is a vote for or against Turkey's increasingly powerful leader, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. For NPR News, I'm Dari Buskaran in Istanbul. Democratic presidential hopefuls are spreading their messages this weekend. At the same time, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham launched his 2020 re-election campaign yesterday with the help of Vice President Pence. As South Carolina Public Radio Scott Morgan reports, the Trump administration's support appears to be a preemptive effort against threats from possible Democratic challengers. At Graham's launch party in Greenville Saturday afternoon, the vice president implored Trump supporters in the state to knock on doors with a message to voters. Tell them that Senator Lindsey Graham has been an indispensable partner with President Donald Trump all along the way. You got to go tell him. Graham has not exactly been a Trump supporter all along the way, but the message was clear to conservatives that a vote for Lindsey Graham is now an important vote for the Trump agenda. The early timing of the re-election launch, coupled with a visit from Trump's second-in-command, suggests the Graham camp is taking threats of Democratic inroads next year seriously. Graham so far is facing no significant challenge in the 2020 primary, but Democrats see South Carolina as a state they could flip and have targeted Graham's seat as a major prize. 
For NPR News, I'm Scott Morgan. This is NPR. A cholera outbreak in Mo-